Sewing can be an expensive hobby with lots of tools needed and space to store them. So it's essential when you buy your kit that you get it right. Today I'm going to talk you through my most used sewing room tools and why I love them. For each one I will also include a link below of where you can get them for yourselves. Let's start with the big one and probably the one that immediately comes to mind for any beginner sewer. The sewing machine. There are hundreds of models available at a whole range of prices and a multitude of features. If you are just beginning, I highly recommend getting a basic model or even finding a second hand one. 90% of the sewing you do on your machine will be a simple straight line. The other features will be used, but it will depend on the types of garments you create. There is no point investing in a machine with 40 different zigzag stitch options if you have no plans to make stretch garments. You're wasting your money. Start basic, learn what you like and invest as you improve. You will quickly learn what features on your machine you find yourself lacking and then you can actually focus in on what brands specialise or have good reviews in that particular area. You need a minimum of three sets of scissors in your sewing room. Fabric scissors or shears. Larger scissors with a long blade that allow you to do a long, smooth, clean cut when cutting your patterns out of your fabric. These should only ever cut fabric, never anything else. These don't need to be expensive, but you will find that keeping them sharp improves your cuts a lot. Paper scissors. Basic household scissors you find at any shop. You will use these to cut out your paper patterns, tapes you use on pattern adjustments and opening hardware packets. Snips or small scissors. These are precise and little. You'll use them for snipping threads away and detailed work like grading seam allowances. By having a small blade, you reduce the risk of accidentally cutting into part of your garment you don't mean to. Another option is a rotary cutter. I personally hate these, but they really help when cutting out flimsy fabric that moves a lot. This is a circular blade you can roll along quickly and accurately, which brings us on to number three. This is a self-healing mat that protects your work surfaces from damage from pins and scissors. It's also essential for under a rotary cutter. I have these in a few sizes. I store my largest A1 size under my sofa when not in use. What I love most about this one is that it works as a movable table area I can place on carpets in my house and have a hard surface with the extension of the surrounding floor to support my fabric. When you cut fabric, you're dealing with large lengths. Most people will not have a table in their home that they can spread out a two metre length of cotton. So you end up on the floor. A large cutting mat is a great storable solution instead of a large bulky table you can't move. Also, these are great for general crafting too. It's become the go-to activity station in my house for DIY, gift wrapping and puzzles. Many beginners make the big mistake of not pressing their seams as they work, thinking they will simply iron it at the end. It's crucial to press as you work at each step. In fact, I would say this is the step that will transform your sewing from amateur to professional looking. Get yourself a decent iron that you can adjust the temperature for lots of fabric types and also produces steam that you can turn on and off as required. To accompany your iron, invest in some ironing hams. You can buy these in a couple of different shapes, but the idea of them are that they are to replicate the curves of the body. So you get long straight ones for the inside of sleeves and legs, or shaped ones that you can then rotate and move till you find your curve. Our bodies are not flat like your ironing board, and therefore neither should our garments be. 
you will find these just become an automatic part of your ironing routine after you get one. Another ironing aid is a clapper that sets the pressing rapidly after you lift your iron. You can substitute this at the beginning for any clean lump of wood or even a wooden spoon. And as for substituting that ham, try a rolled up towel at a pinch. Marking your fabric accurately and precisely is the only way to guarantee symmetrical garments that fit your body correctly. Being out by a few millimetre can really change the outcome of your garment shape. You need to invest in a few different methods and colours to mark your fabric. I use chalk and erasable pens. The chalk I have in two formats. Typical tailor's chalk like this which I have in several colours. I use this on heavier weight fabrics like denims, twills and wool. I also use it for marks that I will be immediately referring to as movement and touching the fabric will remove the chalk with time. I also have these pencil chalks, they are very precise, easy to trace darts, I hard, highly recommend these. Next is the Frickson erasable pen, which is removed by heat. This is not strictly made for use with fabric and I have been told that if you put this back in a very cold environment, the mark could return. I personally have never experienced that or experimented by placing it in my freezer to see. You can pick these up at most stationery stores. However, if it still makes you nervous, there are other brands that are made specifically for fabric use. You usually find them a lot more expensive, but the option is there. I do not use the pen method on expensive fabrics like silks. If it's an important project, I stick to chalk or thread tracing. Just give yourself a few options and don't limit yourself to one. You're going to make a mistake eventually, no matter how good you are. But more so, if you're fitting your garments, you will be adjusting the location of your seams, either in a twirl or the actual garment. To do this with minimal damage to your fabric, you need a seam unripper. These can be picked up in cheap packs in a few sizes. There are branded ones that feature fancy handles and a stronger construction. Personally, I go with the cheap ones and I have a couple spread around my sewing room so I always have them available. One in my desk, another in my sewing bag and a third in my machine. You'll really appreciate this when you come to need it. If you begin tracing patterns, altering patterns or even drafting your own patterns, you'll find yourself quickly frustrated by standard printer paper. It's labour intensive, piecing them together and the part you need to see the detail always has the bad look of landing at the join where it's not clear. A great way to save yourself time is by investing in larger paper. Now I find the best and most accessible paper is wrapping paper or cheap wallpaper. Look for post holiday sales and grab a bundle cheap. I have upgraded since to these paper rolls. You can buy them for industrial printers, kids drawing easels. They come in wide widths like one metre and I think this one I have here is 50 metres long. This will last me a long time, usually 12 months plus and I do a lot of drafting. I really find that this saves me a lot of time and makes my work more accurate as a result. The paper is also stronger than my wrapping paper so my patterns are sturdier and store for multiple use better. I'll include a few links for paper rolls I have used below. This also goes for tracing paper. Look at baking parchment paper instead of more expensive tracing. You can see through it, it comes in a long roll, you can pick it up at your general shop. Convenient and cheap. Measuring yourself and your patterns is essential for a good fit. 
you will need to get yourself a couple of reliable rulers and guides to get good lines. First, a measuring tape, and I would encourage you to get one that does both centimetre and inches. You'll find different patterns work in either. I myself work in both units in the same project. Also, your measuring tape will stretch with time, so check it regularly and swap it if it's gone. Next, a quilting ruler like this. It allows you to see through and make very even seam allowances and straight edges. The reason I love this so much is that for me, this is the best and only way to ensure you get a straight grain line on your fabric. Align one edge with your fabric selvage and then match your pattern grain line with whichever line suits on the ruler. It's a quick and very clear way to see if you have a pattern at a tilt. Next, a pattern maker or French curves. If you can get both, go for it. But these are a set of rulers specifically made with curves that you find and complement the body. The body is not straight and most seams will not be either. These rulers give you lots of options and usually seam allowance guidance is included to make your lines pristine. Pins are just pins. Why should I get complicated? That's what I thought when I started. Then I discovered there was multiple types of pins. Flathead, these with a tip. Different colours, different lengths, you can get finer pins for more delicate fabrics. Which you buy will be dependent on what you sew the most, but one thing I believe you should always look for is a glass head or no head at all. The problem with these plastic headed pins and the reason why you should avoid them is you will melt them with your heat from your iron. Eventually you will forget your pin isn't heat proof and you'll not have enough hands to hold a hem straight while you press and you will make, melt the pin to your garment and your iron. So when buying pins, have a look for this type which are solid metal or a glass head tip. I find the ones with tips safer, especially if you have pets or children or weaker eyes. These type get swallowed up by carpets if you drop them and you'll be on your hands and knees forever trying to find them. So having a tip is a safer option. These are just a few of the items I love to have in my sewing kit. And if you're starting out or getting serious about sewing, they are a great things to begin building up with. All the links are below for everything I have mentioned today. For full disclosure, I do have a few affiliate links down there but I would never advertise a product without giving my full honest opinion. So these are genuine recommendations and you will see all of these items being used in nearly every video on my account. If you're interested in improving your sewing, do check out the rest of my account for sewing tutorials for all abilities. I cover general techniques through to pattern drafting and sew alongs. Hit like, and subscribe if you want to stick around or just help support my channel. Happy sewing!